The way I propose we'll do the evening is that uh, our two speakers will uh, have five to ten minutes each of general, putting a general position, and then we'll examine quickly four issues. One is, is Iran becoming an increasing danger to its own population, becoming more oppressive? The second is, is Iran a threat to its neighbors or a growing threat to its neighbors and to the world? The third is, what forms of intervention, if any, uh, um, may change events for the better in Iran? And the last question is to ask both of them to speculate on how political change may, might come to Iran in the future. And then there will be time for questions from the floor. So we could open now with the beginning, and Yasmin, perhaps you will go first. Thank you very much. I'm going to start by reminding you of what happened a few years ago when, during the World Cup, Iran was supposed to play the United States. And um, I remember quite clearly that inside Iran, the majority of the population who are young, who are under 30, uh, were very keen for that match to go on. And in fact, at that time, part of the regime was also keen, and the match took place. Um, and once the match took place, Iran won the game. Uh, but what was surprising was the celebrations afterwards, in terms of uh, the majority of the people inside Iran seeing this as something of a, of a national victory. Over the last few months, as the threat uh, against Iran has increased, there's been a number of polls done by various news agencies inside Iran. And most of these show that um, around 70 more 75 percent of the Iranian population um, do want their country to be part of the international political scene. They do not want war with anybody, including the United States. And in a, in a way, that's inevitable. Uh, Iran is a modern country. The, as I said, quite a large section of the population are very young. They're aware of uh, many of the electronic and other facilities that the use anywhere else are, are benefiting from, and they do want to be part of the world um, scene. But what they don't want, and what I think some of these polls give the wrong impression of, is that they don't want to be invaded by the United States. They do not want to be their country to be humiliated, either through military intervention or through um, airstrikes or sanctions followed by airstrikes and regime change. And there are many reasons for this, uh, some of which are historic. Um, as Martin said, I opposed the Islamic regime from the day it came to power. I don't think there's been a day where I haven't thought that uh, its coming to power was a disaster, uh, its rule has been a disaster, and so on. However, um, I think as Iranians, we have um, a history of, uh, we remember a history of US interventions in our country, and it starts in 1953 and the coup d'etat uh, against uh, Mossadegh. And whatever one thinks of what would have happened had Mossadegh stayed in power, and I personally don't have many illusions about this, there is no doubt that if that CIA coup helped by the British did not happen, we would be facing a different map in the entire Middle East now. And that was followed by two and a half decades, where I think during the Shah's time, uh, the secular forces, democratic forces, liberal forces, but also the left, faced the harshest forms of uh, political repression. The arrests were mainly dished out to those sections of the opposition. While the clergy, the Shia clergy, did face opposition, but at a much lower level. The mosques were the gathering places. They paved the way in the absence of any other form of opposition for um, the, the clergy tr uh, trying to mobilize for itself and then benefit from a revolution that had nothing to do with them, because it was a revolution that mobilized masses, millions of Iranians for social and political change, not just to overthrow the dictatorship. But at a time when the decimated left, the left that the Shah had totally destroyed, the liberal forces and democratic forces that had been all in prison didn't exist, I think the clergy was in a very strong position to benefit from uh, the upheavals of 1979. And of course, since it has come to power, um, it has killed many more leftists or <laughs> opposition forces. 
but because of those historic reasons, I think even when we face the disasters of the Islamic Republic, many of us inadvertently do also blame the US intervention and the Shah's US-backed regime for those two and a half decades, where, uh, if you like, the whole policy of tolerating Islam by the United States, because the main enemy was socialism, was the Soviet Union or whoever else, uh, it did make a big difference uh, to the coming to power of such forces, and we can't forget it. Um, it's impossible for us to forget it. Um, and ever since then, I think uh, Iranians see the conflict as something that um, has constantly strengthened this regime, because whenever it's falling uh, behind in terms of responding to the demands of ordinary people, it retrieves back into its um, uh, rhetoric, in my opinion, its anti-Western, anti-US rhetoric. And in a way, that's been a constant theme in this um, uh, situation. But of course, it's true that Iranians have many grievances in, against this regime. And I'm going to talk about two very general aspects of those. The first one is inevitably the, inter, the uh, interference of the religious state in the private lives of Iranian citizens. And that is a serious matter if you live in a country where every aspect of your social and private life <coughs> is big is being monitored by the state and is being regulated by the state, there is an opposition to that. Um, and many of the reports of um, like the opposition to the regime concentrate on such um, struggles. There, I think, one has to distinguish between the middle classes and upper classes who have now come to a level of, who don't like this regime, but have come to some level of equilibrium with the state. They pay the bribes, they get away with everything they want to do. And um, Iran, is the Islamic clergy is very good at uh, organized bribes, not just in a, unofficial bribes. Um, but the real victims of that are, in fact, um, the um, ordinary Iranians, the millions of youths who are under 30, whose everyday life is being uh, controlled by this. How do they fight it? They have fought it and they are forming grassroots ways of fighting this. They cannot um, win it overnight, but it's a movement from within uh, which, is, which has a future because it, it relates to the lives of ordinary people. And I don't think it can be won, for example, by the $60 million that the US annually dedicates to regime change with these television channels, radios, and so on. Most of these television channels are run from California by generals of the Shah or various connections of the Shah. And the funny thing is that the programs are frozen in 1979. The hairstyles, the makeup, everything is <laughs> frozen in 1979. And to most young Iranians who see it, they're more a source of, enter you know, a joke rather than a, a place of entertainment. And I'm surprised that no one in the US seems to even uh, find that out. Uh, if they could speak to ordinary Iranians, that would be the first thing they would tell them. Um, 